Okay, why don't, why don't you go over who's here and, and we'll, uh, while I start at 6.10, we'll call the, uh, we'll call the informational meeting to order. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so uh, public informational hearing with the select board, uh, the alternate to the floor discussions uh, that normally would happen on Tuesday for town meeting day. Uh, Brian Shackett needs to mute. <laughs> Brian, can you mute when you're you're picking up a lot of feedback on that? Thank you. <laughs> no, you're good. What's that? No, I'm unmuted. <laughs> now you're good. Thanks. So, uh, in attendance, we've got. The full select board, Elizabeth Fenn, Jim Noyes, Liz Courtney, Marie Nazaro, Richard Grogan, and myself, Ron Rajensky, town administrator. And that's it. Okay. Let me say, well, <laughs> we're all work on muting ourselves and then remembering to unmute ourselves when we want to say something. Um, Glad to have folks join us. Um, the agenda is really we just uh, we we go through the uh, the warning, um, and and if we we have some time, there are a couple of other things that I thought I'd take advantage of and we can talk about. I'm happy to have everybody that's with us stay put while we while we talk about it. the the first article is a is a list of um of all the folks that are are vote are going to be voted by australian ballot um we've got the select board members we've got listers um the school district cemetery commission library trustees i'm i'm noticed having having voted early there are a lot of empty slates there um We'll see what happens. People want to be careful with empty slates. Somebody could, you know, somebody could get you by doing a write-in campaign for somebody. Um, so I guess the first one is Article Two: Is shall the voters appropriate two thousand dollars to the North Central Vermont Recovery Center? And 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 for a little um, these the the organizations that we give to every year um everyone came in and is just uh level funding so we have and we started last year when folks just level fund we just we just leave it so we didn't feel there's that their their if you will their base appropriation is built right into our budget these are three new requests so um, if we were at a regular town meeting, these are folks that would stand up on the, on the floor and ask to be added into the budget. So do we have anyone from the North Central Vermont Recovery Center? Not, not hearing anybody. It, um, these are, you know, they're located uh, over in Morrisville, uh, they do lots of work with folks that are having substance use issues. Uh, they've been, they're part of a statewide network that has been around for some time. They do a lot of, of uh, mentoring and peer support work with folks. It has proven over the years, not just in Vermont, but in a variety of places, to be uh, to be very successful programs. And as I think we all know, substance use issues, and this includes alcohol as well, um, is on the increase. This year of lockdown for people has increased people's stress and consequently a lot more folks misusing substances trying to find a little comfort in life so the need has been uh, has been growing just as as we see in here that the demand for mental health counseling is growing tremendously um, I don't anybody on the board the board 
heard me say this last year. And anybody have any questions or want to add anything? Okay, we're good. Um, Article three is will the voters uh, appropriate $750 to Salvation Farms? We have somebody, right, Ron? No? Yeah, I'm not sure if anybody's speaking. We just open it up and see if anybody wants to jump in. How did we use this much silverware already? <laughs> what? <laughs> Was that at Salvation Farms? <laughs> That think, sounded sort of more like a that sounded like a church basement kind of basement thing. Kind of. <laughs> I don't know. There's a couple of callers that are not muted, so they're okay. So, like, <laughs> so we're, we're we're learning that they've used a lot of silverware. Okay, <laughs> as long as they aren't stealing grandmas, we're okay. Um, last uh, last week, Salvation Farms had someone talking about you know their programs and and what they do, the amount of of uh, gleaned food. Uh, that they save and that goes out to um, um, the things like programs like Meals on Wheels. Uh, they have helped distribute fresh produce through doctors' offices to get good foods to folks that are um, that are really feeling the pinch. They've done again, as we know, particularly this year, the the number of of families that are really struggling with them. Um, <laughs> With with enough food, never mind putting good food on their table, is has uh, has grown tremendously. Um, they have one of the questions Dave asked asked uh, last week, and is good. They don't they don't work with the schools um, unless they do some educational programs, because they are very careful to not interfere with anything, uh, any programs that that uh, farmers are selling directly to. So they are very aware, and if anything, part of their long-term goal is to help farmers find more markets for their products. Okay, anybody want to add anything? All righty. Uh, Article 4 is show the voters appropriate $500 to the Vermont Family Network. Um, let's see, we learned last week that this group, and once it joggled my memory, I went, oh yeah, um, they work with schools and they work with families for, uh, with kids with special needs, um, helping the family get access to, to the support services, uh, that they, that they need for, uh, helping deal with, again, with children that have special needs. Uh, five. Oh, that's exactly what it says, isn't it? Article five is show the voters approve in addition to any other appropriations. In other words, if we accept, if the other articles are, are supported. Um, to, it is so strange to be doing town meeting like this. <laughs> like, okay, if they're worried, whatever. Um, the, um, the, Budget would be two million seven hundred thirty-six thousand dollars, of which two million three hundred and eight thousand two hundred would be raised by property taxes. I can't remember, Ron, if we approve the the if voters approve the three up above. It, what does it add? Yeah, so, yeah. If every, I got the number here. If everything was approved, right? It was a 4.2% tax rate increase with a, I think, 3.4% budget increase, something like, something like that. So it was, and 1% and of that was the new water rates because you, you, the select board always tries to get close to 3% tax rate increase. So with the water rates, it went up from the three to three to four, basically on the tax bill, three to 4%. Yeah, everybody, um, including all the all the groups that um, you know that generally get get money from towns. Everybody was very conscious of 
what a difficult year it has been for for uh, for folks. So try, trying to stay between the two and three percent. Um, I see our, our school budgets did a really good job of that too. Um, so um, again, that's the that's the that's the question. If um, Ron, shall, we, shall we go ahead and go through and then go back and, and talk with Dick? Yeah. Well, you're following the agenda. I think if um, you want to bring, if you want to talk to Dick now, you're you're in the right part of the agenda. <laughs> the only the, agenda six is pretty quick because it's a tax rate. But I think just from an order order perspective, stay here in um, number five. Okay. Um, Bring, bring something a, a, a little new. Um, we have, uh, you know, is for the for the town and the road crew, uh, which I expect is the same in every community, but it certainly is difficult for small towns as, um, one, the state puts more and more regulation on communities and on roads and things that we have to do um, but be with the small crew we end up in the summertime with people taking their time off so a small crew becomes an even smaller crew and in conversations with with mark we're sort of what sort of things and and just watching him through the through the building season uh, a lot of his time is taken up having to go inspect projects that are being done. I think this year coming up, there's you know there's the finishing of the of the village water project. Um, there's the center road, the big paving thing that's going on out there. And uh, and some time ago, I thought you know what would be what would be great is if Mark would be allowed to actually put more time in work. And uh, my thought a couple of years ago was if we could find like a retired engineer or somebody who wanted to put in a little bit of time in the building season, who would have experience in the background to go do these sorts of checks and, and work with Mark. Um, but that, that would free up Mark's time to be able to do more on the, on the literally on the, on the work projects with the guys. And so when we, when we have somebody on vacation, instead of having a two-person crew, we could actually still have a three-person crew. And uh, and and Ron was aware that uh, that uh, Dick had this kind of experience and was maybe interested. So we just started some very um, informal conversations about how this might be an interesting. I'd say it's a, it's a pilot project to. Um, to assist our road crew and all the work that has to be done to see if we couldn't have our make everything get done a little better, a little frust a little less frustration on some people as well. Um, Ron, you think that's a pretty good overview? And then we'll Yeah, I think the other the other piece that comes up is the funding part of it. So every year there's always um, inspections to be done or work to be sort of um, uh, work items to be defined, if you will, uh, neighbors to be met with, you know, stuff that takes some real time out in the field, but also with somebody that has the technical experience to push those through re relatively quickly. So there's uh, some expert advice, if you will, in the, in the planning part. And there's also some long-term planning that we're, we are needing to do, which is also looking at road and bridge and culvert networks so that we can understand those costs better and bring those recommendations to the board uh, for the budget season. So, for example, uh, when Roger Berry was around, we started working on a, uh, a paving plan, capital paving plan for a 20 or 25 year cycle. Then we got down to the inventory and then we got into, you know, pretty, pretty close to coming up with some ballpark numbers, but we didn't quite finish it enough to be able to tell the select board uh, if the 245,000 a year, which is where your paving budget is this year proposed for July 1st, if that's a good number or are we 
fifty thousand dollars short. So those are kind of it's it's big and small, I guess, is my perspective. It's the it's the details of having somebody able to bring some uh, not necessarily mediation or negotiation skills, but just able to assess something pretty quickly and talk to Mark and make a recommendation and get something done. Um, you know, service to the public when they need it. I know if Brian has a, a neighbor on his road and, I don't, you know, it's, it's almost, I think Mark went out there two or three times trying to understand what that was, whether it was a drainage problem or whether it was uh, the road got shifted. Um, and, and I think each time he had to go meet up there, he's, he's taken away from his crew time. And like Susan said, if you take away one person from a three person crew, and the fourth person's out grading the road, you, you end up maybe having to stop a job or delay a job or reschedule a job and all that stuff. The pilot part is, is the more interesting part because we haven't had somebody look, look at that whole piece. But the way we've done in the past, you'd have uh, a depot street sewer line being cut across the road uh, and us, being the town, not necessarily directly involved, but the village had to cut the road. The village hired somebody to inspect it. Uh, for their perspective, their, their contractor had to do the inspections, but the town, went, we went and hired Summit Engineering to make sure it was done the right way so that, that road could be put back together and not create a problem. Even though it wasn't a town project, it was a village project that was damaging the town road. And you know, I, I think Summit Engineering spent um, three quarters of a day out there, just kind of watching the contractor, make sure the fittings are right, the compaction was back, you know, the way it's supposed to be uh, before the road was paved. And they actually did a pretty good job in the end. But we've also seen some bad jobs where nobody was on site to watch the contractor, and we have to go back out and tell them to redo it again. And that that's that's the type of stuff that Mark gets really upset with because. Now he doesn't have to look at one project. Now he just has to go look at a repair project and make sure the second project is good. So I think there's there's all sorts of things that we want to take notes on um, if this pilot project can be done. And then next fall in October, uh, we would get a report on how it went and if it's a good thing to continue and whether or not we should uh, make it a make it a systems, you know, permanent systems. Uh, fix or a component. Uh, somebody report to the select board uh, on a major project, somebody to help Mark when Mark needs help. Uh, and then, of course, with the select board planning over the winter, uh, we just, you know, we've been talking about paving streets, but those are almost uh, you know, the must do's. We, we don't have a paving plan for next year, you know, for example. And some of that stuff just takes time to, to put together. Uh, we've also started doing the culvert upgrade first before paving and that's the uh, vtrans does that now a lot i think morrisville does that now and you, you try to do the road once you don't do three out of 20 culverts you know you you, you might want to do you might end up doing some early but at least you inspect everything to know that those are good culverts to last the 12 to 15 years that pavement's supposed to last and i and, you know it's, I, I think i want to i see this as a way to bring bring that piece of planning as well as inspection together a little bit and, and have some efficiencies, uh, whether it's bu budgetary efficiencies, Mark's time, and just plain just advice, you know, uh, don't do it this way, you guys are, I know you've been doing it like this for 15 years, but you should stop doing it that way and here's a new way and, and, and be open to those discussions. Well, I, I also think what happens a lot of times, um, it probably happens in big communities as well. Um, but, you know, it just gets, it, it gets so busy that the time to plan, the time to, to draft things out properly just vanishes. Um, and again, that's where I think, I think it would be, I think it would be helpful. Well, Dick, now that we've tromped all over the place, how have we done? Myself? <laughs> <I'm Yeah. there>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> How did we describe you? <laughs> uh, well, I, I worked with the Public Works Department in Stowe for nine years. I was with Percy's for 15 years, project management level stuff. 
Uh, I certainly understand where everybody's coming from as far as the need to have some oversight. Um, like Ron mentioned, all the new uh, burden that are, the state is putting on small towns, uh, stormwater, stormwater work is just huge. And I, I don't understand how anybody can keep up with that personally. Uh, Public Works and Stowe, we ended up with uh, three people in the office. Our Public Works director, myself, and we actually hired another, uh, in my, in my uh, time there, we hired another young man, town engineer, to help out our Public Works director. So it just, there's so much going on all the time. Renovations of sidewalks and streets and uh, underground utilities, and, and it's, not, it's not getting any easier. So I agree with what Susan said at the beginning about small towns are really starting to feel this. Um, and, you know, what, what's a good answer, good economical, but also uh, strategic answer to it. And may, maybe we're what we've been talking about briefly. Maybe that's a good solution for a small town is to have somebody uh, part time uh, oversight opinions like ron said or uh, anything like that so i think it's a good idea i mean from a from a taxpayer's perspective and trying to make the highway department crews more efficient seems like it's a good idea pilot program yeah i think i think in a year we'd we'd all we'd all learn a lot you could go well this was a really bad idea or uh, well, you may start it mean you have a whole consulting business that you end up with 15 people working for you up in small towns who knows right <laughs> um the other five i'm sure our other board members have some thoughts or questions and as i say we don't we don't have to make a decision tonight but my my goal would be i thought since we had this time set aside it would be a good time to talk about it and then on our regular meeting on the 15th we can we can we can decide what we want to do and sure. how much money we want to allocate towards it and that sort of stuff. Yeah, and and just, just so the rest of the board members that's listening, Roger Moy and stuff. Sue and I had a brief conversation on this this afternoon, and uh, uh, th 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 this ain't a cheap hourly thing. What did you say? What's fifty dollars an hour? You're going to charge the town? Yeah. And, and and how many hours do you figure that you would put in a week, Richard? I don't have the yes. answer for that. Yeah, we well, that that's all the stuff that we have to sort out, Dave. Yeah, we've got to make a budget. It's a, it's right. what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what, what I'm thinking, and the only way I'm thinking, I'm not saying one thing about your credentials, Richard. Not one thing a bit. All I'm looking at is the taxpayer's pocketbook. Understood, and I'm a I'm a taxpayer, so I understand that. Now, now if our argument is we're taking Mark off the the uh, the, the town stuff to, to answer these questions and stuff, and, yep. and we're paying Mark uh, uh, twenty two dollars an hour, right. and we're paying you fifty dollars an hour, right. we, and and we hire a part time guy in the summer for seventeen thousand yep. dollars, you know, for, for another fifteen thousand, we can get yep. another full time employee. Which would relieve Mark from doing this work. Just, just, just an avenue to go, guys. I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just throwing that out. Well, but uh, this isn't the kind of work that we're gonna um, we're gonna hire a crew member for. Again, that's you know this is the this is the more planning, strategic, overseeing it, and and again, part of my thought is is if this works. And Mark can do more direct work because we periodically have, do we need a fifth person? Do we need a fifth person? I think right. this could be a way of addressing, no, we don't need a fifth person if this works the way I hope it works. Because because it lets Mark drop back into that doing a lot of um, physical work as opposed to planning in, mm -hmm. you know, checking work. But don't don't this take some of the work off your plate, Ron? Uh, part of the part of what we're trying to juggle is the the issue we have with these inspections. So I'm not I'm not qualified to go out and.
talk to a contractor about how they're exactly supposed to do something. I have the general idea and I can turn back at somebody, but a lot of the, a lot of the adjustments that Mark French could do or somebody that's an engineer, they'll be able to know that if you adjust it this way, it's going to work. If you adjust it that way, it's not going to work. And that's nothing I've ever, I've ever done in my job. So what, what we do instead is we hire somebody out like an engineer or a consultant to come out and help. And those are you know 90 to $125 an hour. So we'd be saving that exercise on those inspections. How, and, how much? You know, did, how, how many dollars did we spend last year on the consultants? Oh, uh, <laughs> we're probably close to. Yeah, I don't. Well, that's a hard question because we hire consultants, all sorts of work. So we've oh. paid. We've paid Summit Engineering, Watershed Consulting, uh, Matt Reed did some work for us. Uh, there's consultants that only can do work that they're going to stamp, and then there's there's consultants that will come and give us advisory inspections. They're not going to stamp it because they didn't design it. So I, I don't expect that Dick will be uh, designing anything as much as reviewing it and coming up with solutions and then looking at long-term plans. So right now, we don't pay anybody to work on the long-term uh, big picture plans. That's one of the problems that we've had. There's just there's not enough time to sit down and work it up, look at all the roads, get up a nice road plan together. We've tried it a couple times, but we just it, other things get pushed around and nobody's there to focus on. It. So you know, I'll give you a quick example. I don't, I don't, I guess to answer your real question, Dave, I don't, I don't think we're going to spend. I'd be surprised if we spent more than five thousand dollars in the summer on sort of the running around for the construction inspection and helping us get ready for next year. I don't I don't see that being a big first year, big blowout special, you know, that you might think. This is really a pilot project. On the 15th we could talk to, you know, about the parameters for what the what the budget could be. Tell Dick that that's the budget we got for this pilot project and and let's come up with a better program or or back off the whole thing and just say we don't need it. As far as you know, the the other the other angle I think is Mark French will still go out and meet with neighbors and landowners that are having road problems. I think he's he's got to go that first time, and then if he has an issue that he can't resolve, then he might want to call Dick in to have you know scratch their heads together and try to come up with a resolution. But Mark French was pretty adamant that he still wants to be the first one called on road problems. And I think that's that's nothing that we put Dick in the middle of because probably ninety percent of the time Mark is going to Mark and the crew are going to have a solution to that. So that's yeah. nothing that that's nothing that we'd have Dick doing. It would, it, it the, would it, it, oh, sorry, sorry. It would probably be an awkward position to be in as a private, you know, consultant to be uh, directing townspeople, you know where and how to put a culvert in, things like that. You start to get into funny liability. That, uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. like right now, if, if we're reviewing a highway access permit, uh, generally what happens is there's a, Mark and Ryan will go out and look at the application. If there's nothing significant there, we'll issue the permit. If it's a difficult situation, then we, we have hired people to come to help with a let's say an inspection type phase so mm -hmm. um, we may have an applicant submit a plan we look at it it makes sense but it's just that difficult where we'll put a condition on the permit that it's inspected by the landowner or if it's not that bad mark mark french or dick or somebody could go out and look at it to make sure it's okay i've done it myself but very very infrequent usually usually it's mark french going out there to make sure he's the one that has to sign off on it but if you if he runs into a problem that's where you know we can hire a consultant or dick depending on the need i, I don't know if dick i don't know if dick's going to take elevations for example i think that's something that we may still have to hire somebody out to do that kind of work i've got a question <clears throat> um yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about your educational background? 
Um, years ago, I'm actually an electronic technician by education. I went to a technical school in Waltham, Massachusetts. So that's what I started off in. I'm a computer technician, hardware technician. Um, got into the excavation business back in the early 80s. Uh, and that's where I've been ever since. I came to Dale Percy Incorporated down in Stowe in 1997. I was hired as an estimator, project manager. And uh, the time I was there, Dale Percy, definitely uh, exponential growth. It was a good time for a lot of companies like that. And my, my education is a Dale Percy Incorporated, quite a bit of it. Um, a municipal education is at the town of Stowe. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, just wondering, uh, one thing we're going to have to do first, and I know that it's happened in the past, is we'll have to develop some sort of a job description. Otherwise, uh, certain things go to the wayside. Um, and um, we'd have to check the funding. Like you said, we'll have to set a budget of some sort so we can afford it. Right. Um, so... Those are my uh, my uh, concerns in the sense, uh, if you can call them that. But uh, I think you'll be you'd be a great asset to uh, the, the town, and uh, you living in the town is another uh, asset. Mm -hmm. And I I think too, again, right and all, those all still fairly superficial here, but with a variety of grants and programs that we have already, is probably where we can we can pull money to pay for him. So as opposed to it being, if you will, it's additional spending, we can pull it out of, you know, like the, the giant sinkhole project that goes on forever. And, and again, like last year, as Ron was saying, we have to hire some engineer and those folks to come out and do things for us. It'd be a lot easier to have Dick involved with it and keeping an eye on it and 50 bucks an hour instead of $140 an hour. Roger, you got any questions right now? Is no, everybody's asked what I was, you know, has asked all the questions I could think of, and um, sounds pretty good to me, as long as we can find the funding for it. So if there's a project that needs to be signed off on or anything like that, you have the credentials, uh, Richard, to do that? No, I'm not a PE, no. and I'm mm -hmm. not a site technician. No, I'm not a designer. I'm not a designer. I'm... I'm uh, a, a construction manager. I, when I left Percy's in 2011, I, I went on my own uh, for a year and a half. I worked with, uh, actually, Jay Peak. I had been up at Jay Peak with Percy's on uh, the initial projects up there, the ice arena, and uh, we did the hotel. I mean, we did a lot of work up there for quite a few years. Um, when I left Percy's, Jay Peak reached out, reached out to me very similar to a situation like that they heard through the grapevine that I'd left and uh, I ended up overseeing uh, a couple of water projects. Water happens to be my thing. I did a lot of municipal water work over the years. Um, so they hired me to be on the hill watching two or three different contractors that were doing various utility projects up there. It was pretty much daily reports, photographs, reporting back to the engineers that were, were the designers. So I worked I worked under the level under the designers. I worked directly with them, gave my opinions for whatever that was worth and uh, reported back to them. If there were any major issues, I wasn't the one directing I wasn't the one directing contractors on, on what to do. I would have to go back to the engineering firm, in this case Trudell Consulting and uh, another company I can't remember they were doing all the stormwater work but anyway if I saw a problem or an issue or heard of one I had to relay that back so I was the on the boots on the ground they call me boots on the ground liaison to between the engineers the owners and all the contractors that were working up there at the time so I see this as a similar thing you're bringing you had Hutchins in town you had Percy's in town this year doing culvert work and uh, getting ready for next year's paving and uh, 
So that's what I see, the need. The need, what Ron was describing, running around and checking on these things and making sure everything's going the way it's supposed to. And if there's any problems, reporting back. And so it's a long-winded way of saying, no, I'm not a designer or a construction manager. My, ex my experience is roads, water, sewer, I can't even tell you how many uh, you know sites and both commercial site work and residential site work. When we, when I was with Percy, we did quite a bit. We did it all over northern Vermont, not just in so. I was in uh, Milton. I was in J. Blah blah blah. So, so, so Richard, you've got the credentials. If uh, uh, let's say this past year when uh, Percy or Hutchins are putting in. Uh, the yeah. hole was there, and, and they weren't compacting it every 12 inches. You've got the credentials to say, okay, stop right there because you're not doing this right. I've got the, I've got the knowledge to do that. Do I, will, will I have the, uh, the authority, you know, from the town? Again, that, to me, that's kind of a funny area, liability-wise, not being an employee of the town. Uh, yeah, I think... You know what I mean, Susan? I'm right. Yeah, I think that's the kind of situation where if you see something something isn't being done right, you can call Mark immediately. Right. And let him know there's a problem. Right. And being, that's how. And that's how. And I see in some ways, you know, this is a uh, Richard and Mark will have a very close working relationship. Sure. And uh, but when there's an issue or something needs to be called, it's going to be Mark is going to be the one who then may call Ron who. They Might call Ryan and Rolly and say, you know, whoa, exactly. wait a minute, what's going on? Yeah, that, that's, how, that's how I see this. I, I had, uh, I did not have professional liability insurance when I did this back in 2012 when I worked for JP. And I, Rich, Rich uh, Smith, Hickok and Boardman was my agent. And I had to be very careful of how I worded my agreements with uh, whoever I was working with. So that I do not direct, I do not, you know, manage employees, um, observation, and you know, it's, it's it's unfortunately the litigious world that we live in. I, that's a you know, a, a fine line. We have um, we'll have a it's kind of a two part approach here. The first part is to nail down the job description and the money part. The, the <laughs> other part is the agreement for services which it, it is a choice we can have and I, and I think it's just to let everybody know it's a choice you can have contracted people working for the town or you have an employee in this case the specialized services of a, a construction manager are, are not something that we have in as a single job we kind of spread that out you know allison does some financing on the construction job i do some of the grants i do some of the oversight uh, mark does some of the field work so we we do i think maybe this is what dave was talking about we do kind of spread out this job amongst three or four people including the, some of the select board duties when we talk about capital planning uh, which hopefully we'll get be able to do a little bit more on but this is really, think of it as a position that's focused on those things that you want to get done, I guess. I think that's, rather than have three or four people picking at it as things pop up, this person could be, you know, said, okay, here's what we want to see from you. And through this pilot project, you're, you're, the select board will define that better. So it'll be a little bit loose in the sense that it's first time, right. you know, the scope, scope of services. But yeah, I think that that general idea of you seeing something, uh, uh, and being there lets Mark continue with his work and then you're the one that would say yep they were doing good for three days but that fourth day I don't know where that crew came from but right you got to come down here Mark and we got to stop this and have a talk, a talk with this crew yep that, that's, that's, how I, of, that's how I see yeah. it okay Rolly I, I like somebody coming in that's got some stormwater experience because oh man we Owen's got some stormwater. We're all we're all getting hammered in stormwater areas. Yep. I, I think I think we've heard a lot, and I think we've heard enough. This sounds like a good thing to me, but I would like a few days to think about it. 
yeah, like I say, I thought this was just this uh, was, since I, I bet there weren't going to be a whole bunch of things that this would be an opportunity <laughs> since we are all together to be able to to have Dick talk to us and get some ideas and then be able to think about it. And then on the 15th, of course, you know, Brian, <laughs> Brian and Rowley, maybe you and three new people on, on the 15th going for it. So who knows, right? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, is but there negoti is there negotiating between a little bit of the money or what? Dick? With me? Yeah. It's the same rate I was charging in 2012, so I don't, I don't think it's an outrage. I'm carrying my own insurance and using my own vehicle, and you know, so. And and, and that's the only uh, question I got. I agree with Roland. I think it's a good idea because knowledge is knowledge. But unless I did the math right, which I didn't do this afternoon, but if I did the math right now, uh, yeah. uh, if, if we went with a 20-hour, a 20. Uh, a week construction period in the summer of year. 20 weeks, yep, okay. Um, that, that's five hours a week. If, you, if you're gonna hold yourself to that $5,000 budget, you, you think it can be done in a, in a five hours per week? One hour what's the, a day. What, what's the job description? Yeah, that's right. That's why right. we need some time. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. well and, and plus you can end up with, I'm sure, when you, you know, there are going to be times when there isn't a lot that happens. Oh, yeah. And other times it'll be really busy. You can have a week and a half where you're not doing much, and then, yeah. presto, you got 15 hours. That's uh, that's sort of the way. But, but again, I think that's sort of all stuff we can start, we can start hammering out and, and, and figure out for the, for the 15th. And Ron can do a little money searching and we can see what we can come up with. Okay. And and I think now too, Dick, that you've talked to us, you can, um, you know, we can chat back and forth and see if we can refine it a little bit better, and we'll sure. we'll, we'll bring Mark in the loop and okay. see how we do. Okay. Terrific. Richard, don't take this uh, wrong, but uh, uh, we're nope. just trying to we're just trying to feel out everything and see what it. This is the first, uh, somewhat of the first time. I know we've talked about hiring somebody, but uh, perhaps I'm meeting you and that type of thing sure. and trying to get things clarified. So uh, uh, please sure. don't take it wrong. And like I said I before, I I'm sure you'd be an asset to the town. No, I know, I, you know, do you hire, do you hire a full-time uh, public works director or do you start like this? That's, that's really what it comes down to. And the town of Stowe went through this years ago. I don't know if anybody, Roly might've known uh, Cliff Johnson. <laughs> Cliff, John, yes. Cliff Johnson. Cliff Johnson. They got, was they the got two of them down there now, engineers. Well, three when they counted me. <laughs> but um, Cliff Johnson was a retired engineer. Yeah. He, he was from New Jersey. He came to Stowe and he was hired as a part time consultant because Stowe was about to go through water and sewer expansion. And he, he was sucked in and became, you know, 80 hour a week job within three months. <laughs> so. I'm trying to think of the, the guy's name. I can't think of it right now. Up in Sterling that does that. Sterling. Yeah. He's done. He did a lot for Morsel, too. While we were doing that job by the police station. Oh, yeah? Oh, was that uh, Mike Stafford? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think it was. He lives up in Sterling up there. Yeah, he lives up in Sterling. Yeah, Mike Ron Stafford. Terrell. Yeah. Or, okay. Huh. Yeah. Okay. But it, it sounds good. I just yeah. It's all about money. Gotta, gotta have <laughs> gotta have some thoughts in my head. That's, <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. Well, we'll go we'll go to work on it and sort of come up with a with a uh, <laughs> somebody will come up with some kind of a proposal for the fifteenth, as they say. <laughs> See what happens tomorrow. <laughs> so, Susan, there's still. There's still a lot of uh, folks online if you want yep. to just ask if there's anything more on the budget before you get off of Article 5. Okay, or or if people hearing this idea, if they'd like to chime in now, we'd be, yep. be happy again, or budget questions or whatever. Happy to have you join us. Hi, everyone. It's Liz Courtney. Um, I just had a quick question, and I wasn't able to attend the last select board meeting, but I know there was the question um, from the Gaihan Valley Hall committee about a budget increase that we know didn't make it onto the actual budget this year. And I wondered if, what the discussion was about that. Is 
<laughs> yeah, that's uh, I think the select board asked me to work with you and um, Al Spitzer just to figure that out. Uh, basically, you need fifteen hundred dollars for Wi-Fi, which is why you had your presentation. I think it's back in October to go from thirty five hundred to five thousand. So we have some money in our community um, community line. We have a community events line and a community support line in the uh, select board's uh, general government budget. And I don't and other ideas that we can have in the economic development because you're doing uh, the Wi-Fi for the public. So there's. I think we have to have a conversation about how to do that. Um, I think I think you're covering it this current year, right? With your thirty yes. five hundred. Yeah. So we we have a little bit of time to figure it out for July one, but the budget will be set um, uh, unless it, unless it's voted down tomorrow. The budget would be set with the thirty five hundred. So we do have to have some conversations about how to fund the Wi Fi. Yeah, I mean, our our concern was just because it is because our our ongoing maintenance budget is relatively small and as we start using the building more and we're adding heat we know our utility bills are going to go up slightly obviously we'll do a lot more fundraising and events in the future to help offset those costs but um great to know if we just have another way to help fill that gap yep Okay, don't need a total solution now. I just wanted to no. ask if it had gotten discussed. Hey, Liz, it's Brian Shackett. Um, just wondering how you're coming along on uh, your plan for the future for the uh, the, the building itself. Uh, have you got it laid out? What uh, each step or how you're going to proceed with, uh, or is it really contingent on the funding? um both so we have a master plan like how we've sort of put the repairs in order of priority with our, our main priority being getting the first floor um, more equipped for year-round use which we're making good progress on we're putting in uh heaters and updating the electrical which was funded with the vermont arts council grant we just received another grant we'll be announcing in the next few days as soon as um the preservation trust of vermont officially announces it but 50 grand to help us redo all of the windows um so that'll especially help the first floor and then you know we'll work our way up and get the the second floor renovated but we know that it's going to involve fundraising grant writing and you know once COVID is behind us god willing we'll be able to do more events or we can raise money as well are the are the walls in there insulated? I don't believe so. That's on our list of things that we wish to do. Well, you're going to put heat into it. You want to contain it the best you can. So yeah. just a thought. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot. I think the windows will help. We'll get storm windows put in as part of that. But eventually, we'd like to do blown in insulation to the walls to really get it sealed up for the dead of winter. Unless did you guys give up the idea? on the uh uh this dumpster uh what i'm trying to say guys the preservation the the old buildings where remember them guys were going for a grant yes so that's the grant that we've just been right. awarded um you, you went for that grant we did yes. go for the grant and it's been awarded. We need to get the select board's approval to officially accept it because part of the contingency is that we go into an arrangement with the Preservation Trust of Vermont that any future work that we do on the building will need to be by historic standards. But the major upside is we get 50 grand <laughs> that we could redo all of the windows. Well, that that's right, David, was whether they were going to become a historic building or not and discussing the upsides and the downsides. And obviously the upsides is that it opens the door to a lot more money, not just the, not just the preservation trust fund folks, but a lot of, of uh, federal dollars become available for doing things like insulation. So they, they, they just... Yeah. Liz, um, is there a link or something you can send me so I can research that to uh, see what sort of uh, 
um, contingencies, I guess, are on uh, uh, accepting that money? Um, yeah, I think there's probably information on the Preservation Trust website. I can look for that and send it to you. I'll send it through Ron. Um, but we should be getting more information from them directly, I would think, once we get you know, the paperwork to officially accept the grant. Liz, that was a nice that was a nice little newslettery thing catching folks up to speed and everything that you guys have done in the past year. That was well done. Thank you. Well, we figured we wouldn't be able to talk to people from the floor on town meeting. I know. <laughs> what we're up to. Okay. Got anybody else out there that would like to chime in? I'm Jim Noyes. This is your big shot. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to offer, nothing to ask. You guys are doing a good job. I, I, got, I got I got a question, Jim. When do you guys hope to get back to at least limited access into the library? Um, and here comes my trick question. So once you're fully vaccinated, can we get passes? All up in the air. I'm sure we'll be talking about it at our next meeting next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, Ron, we hearing anything from anybody else? Uh, negative. Okay, um, just just while we have us all here, I would, uh, Roly and I met with our new fire chief. And um, Roly, I think we had a very good, we had a very good conversation with him. Yes. And uh, the, the variety of questions that we all had were answered, which I won't take up time here, but at the next next uh, select board meeting we can. But it, it was very it was very productive. And um, my my sense is that there there aren't any hard feelings between people. Um, and uh, they're they're reaching out to do something for Ed. Uh, so I think I think I think everything is working okay. Anything else we need to do, folks? Ron? Uh, you just have to let people know what Article Six is. Article Six. Oh, okay. Article Six is I guess is probably when we're paying the taxes. Yes, the quarterly quarterly yep. payments. Yeah, sticking with our regular. Every year. Quarterly quarterly payments. Um, we're still. Um, it's interesting. This being being a strange day, and we put it. It was in the newspapers, and I know the radio was doing coverage, and everybody was doing coverage. And last time I talked with Kim, usually on a busy town meeting year, she may get thirty five requests for absentee ballots. She's had about 130 already. So folks are definitely seem to be paying attention to it, which is which is good. Okay. And I guess with that, are we done? Anybody got anything else? Have we got to go into executive by any no. Just the hearing tonight. Okay. okay. I guess Thank we can adjourn. Any, what? Any, yeah. Any any progress on uh, the meeting with the town crew? Well, we're trying for the eighth, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna try Monday the eighth um, in the morning. And after the election, we'll set that up for a time. <laughs> Just want to make sure we're working with the, the, the newly elected board to have a, a highway crew meeting. Okay. Anything else? You got anything, Roger? No. Roger, you and I aren't counting votes tomorrow night. It's going to be weird. <laughs> Count them. Okay. 
I guess we can move to adjourn. Yeah. So move. Okay, need a second? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And uh, Dick, I'll reach out to you. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, Thank you. Be, care be careful out there tonight and tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Stay warm. <laughs>